It's Friday night lacrosse from rainy Koskinen Stadium. Number one Duke goes to work against 17th ranked Penn. It's the first of an IB 17th ranked Penn. It's the first of an IB ACC weekend two step. You got Princeton, North Carolina tonight. And then on Sunday, Princeton faces Duke, Penn faces North Carolina. The Blue Devils, through four games, have looked like a juggernaut, a team with seemingly no weakness. They have vaporized their first four opponents, scoring almost 21 a game, giving up less than 10 per game. Anish Shroff, Matt Ward with you in school history. And Mac Eldridge, who was the number one faceoff man coming out of high school a year ago, the transfer from Virginia takes the opening draw for Penn, and it's Tyler Carpenter off the ground for Duke, and the Blue Devils will go to work first. Josh Sawada, 79 in white. He's the ex-attackman, the Michigan transfer. Left the Wolverines as the school's all-time leading scorer. Peter Blake has the matchup on Zawada. Now McAdory, so quick, out of the box. Two freshmen running on that first midfield. Max Sloat, the redshirt freshman, 15. And now Ben Johnston, who fires a low one. And Carroll comes up with his first save. And a nice job by Penn's defense there. Forcing Johnson to the middle field. Kind of energy going away from the cage and takes that shot from distance. And Carroll's going to eat that up all day. Penn will go to work on offense. Here's James Shipley from Weddington, North Carolina. Matt, the challenge for Penn. Where can you find a matchup to exploit offensively? No Sam Handley this year. It's going to be a tough task. Right? I mean... Duke's defense is big, it's strong. You, you have uh, some of the best players in the country for them on that side of the ball. Penn's smaller this year. Their stick work is an impressive thing to watch, and they really kind of focus on ball movement more so than winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups. And they'll rely on their midfield to get guys moving. You saw Gabe Fury take the shot. Fury is a big guy, 6'5", 220. On the attack, Tyne and Walsh, Ben Smith. You'll see a lot of Luke Dinola as well. Here is Shipley. Over to Ben Smith with four goals in the win against Albany. Now the freshman, Leo Hoffman. 50 in maroon. Top five recruit. Fury shot, and that's an easy save for Jameson. Pretty good ball movement there from Penn. But again, you got to do a little bit more if you're fearing on that shot. Offhand fading away from the cage. Brennan O'Neill still looking for his first touch. Second midfield getting a run for Duke. Charlie Balsamo's got the ball. Aiden Denenza in there. Balsamo's got the short stick matchup. Shipley who plays both ways marking Balsamo. Balsamo, 20 goals as a freshman last year. Turns the corner, bouncer wide. Zawada the backup, feet in front. It hit Papendick. Zawada working on the shorty. Denenza from the wing, saved by Carroll. And that'll reset the shot clock, and Penn will have to dig in for another 60. And great old school lacrosse there from Duke, dodging down the side, making two passes through X. A nice save from Carroll, but they're, they're not going to be, a, Penn's not going to be able to give up shots like that and keep Duke off the scoreboard much longer. Here is O'Neal, his first touch, Lavelle on him. That's the matchup we anticipated. Now Jack Papendick. Long possession here for Duke. Papendick driven back, and so far this Penn defense holding its own. O'Neal down the alley, another save by Carroll. And Lavelle has the backup of this Penn defense. They've played a lot of ball together. And, and look at Carroll here in the cage. Drops his hands, but shoulders go up, almost baiting Brennan O'Neal to shoot that to the top portion of the cage. He dropped his hands, but he actually got bigger up top. Impressive. Body control from Carolyn Cage. 
Carroll three for three. Now, Matt, I would think for Penn, the formula to stay with Duke and potentially pull the upset, probably similar to what Georgetown did against Notre Dame, slow the game down, take Duke out of transition. I, I think that's exactly right. I mean, if you watch that game, Georgetown has taken 40 seconds, 50 seconds, every possession, kind of trying to lull Notre Dame to sleep. And in this wet condition, you can get some opportunities, off ball, backdoor cuts. Um, if you can get Duke to fall asleep a little bit by being really methodical and patient. Smith has his shot blocked. He was defended by Charlie O'Connor. And O'Connor, McGuire, Gray, and Caputo. Duke has the best quartet of short stick D middies in the country. Here comes Rubin and a trail check from behind by Aiden McGuire. Possession to Duke. I think Aiden McGuire is the best D middie in the country. And he does a lot more than that. I mean, as a freshman last year, how he came on at the end of the year, he's just a horse. I mean, he's an incredible athlete. Um, and his ability to push in transition, you can just see there, he's just, he's not someone you go after, right? You typically try to attack D middies, not against him. That's the challenge for everybody facing Duke this year. You start to probe, where can we exploit a matchup? Well, when Duke's got the ball, especially with their top six, it creates a lot of conflict. Who do you pull? Who do you short? McAdory fires and scores. And Andrew McAdory with the first tally of the game is eighth of the season. We're going to take a look at McGuire here. The great trip. Look how easy that was. Just effort effort effortless slide from him. And then right there, McAdory, the midi that went to attack. Now back at the midfield. He is a matchup issue for any defense and gets Duke on the board with that nice sweep to his strong right hand. Pulls it across his body to the far post. Duke on the board, 1-0. Two years ago, McAdory set Duke's freshman midfield scoring record. He had three goals and an assist against Penn in Duke's win last year. Eldridge and Naso, and Naso, the first team All-American, two for two. Here comes Gray, face dot straight to the cage. It hits the pipe, rebound loose, and it's Lavelle vacuuming off the ground. Lavelle in transition, slips on the turf. Turf monster. Smith, one more shot and a score. Anthony McMullen, a two-way midi, a freshman, and off the scramble, Penn gets even. Not the most graceful goal I've ever seen. <laughs> UPenn pushing in transition, but a nice job from Anthony McMullen continuing his cut in the odd man opportunity. Left-handed to the top portion of the cage. A key to an upset is getting goals in transition. And that's a huge momentum goal for the University of Pennsylvania. Second of the season for McMullen and now you think of what Penn lost from a year ago, not just Sam Handley, but two guys who were a big part of their transition game, B.J. Farrar, the long stick midi, and Piper Bond. Bond has turned into a pretty good player in the PLL. Those are significant losses on your rope unit. And those are hard to replace. You know, it's very tough to find those elite members of that kind of D midi unit. You, you just can't defend teams in the college level if you, you can't guard those second and third midfielders. McAdory down the alley, scored once against a shorty. Now Zawada's got the short stick. Palazzi tries to stay with him. Zawada feeding inside to Dyson Williams. They call that Green Light Nation. Those two played together at the Hill Academy in Canada, reunited once more in Durham. And again, that offensive set, McAdory had a lefty shot, passes it up to get it to Zawada, who has the short stick matchup. And when you're a feeder like Zawada, and you're against a short stick, good luck as a defense because you can't get enough pressure on his hands, and he's going to find O'Neal and Dyson Williams all day. And his passing so accurate. I mean, Wils Williams wasn't open. <laughs> and he threw him open, and he gets that first goal of the game. 
Dyson Williams had a terrific summer for Team Canada, won a silver medal. And uh, Matt, one of the things I think that shocked all of us was he was dodging guys. Carpenter puts one on goal, missed the cage. Uh, Duke has used him predominantly as an off-ball guy where he is as good as you'll get nationally. But he, he was beating guys off the dodge in San Diego last summer. And it's part of his game, right? He's, he's the best indoor lacrosse player uh, in, in college, right? He's going to have an unbelievable NLL career. They don't need him to do that, though. <laughs> he's so good off ball. And you have <laughs> O'Neal, Zawada, uh, McAdory. Like, stick to, to what's gotten you 160-plus goals in your career. Yeah, this guy, 34, is okay, too. O'Neal had his shot altered. Dyson Williams, to your point, number one pick in the NLL draft. And Brennan O'Neill is the presumptive number one overall pick in the PLL draft. I think O'Neill's going to be a heck of an indoor player, too. <laughs> Just his size and his skill set, he's going to figure that game out real quick. Zawada to Denenza, kick save Carroll. And it's scooped up by Penn. This is Ryan McLaughlin. You get the sense, that. though, you, I mean, you get the sense Duke can get a good opportunity, really, whenever they want so far in this game, right? I mean, their ball movement, their ability to get a step, force a slide from the Quakers, and, and then not taking the first shot, but taking the right shot. I mean, it's, it's really impressive. Now, they're shooting 43% through four games, which is absurd. There's Beecham. Over to Casey Mulligan. Now it comes back to Walsh. Again, Penn trying to win a matchup in the six on six. It's not there. It makes you wonder, Matt. It looked like they may have had an unsettled chance at the start of that possession. If you're Penn, are you trying to push transition when those opportunities arise? Absolutely. I mean, again, you want to maintain possession, but in this game, I just feel like they're going to have to kind of create a chaotic in, in the middle of the field type atmosphere. Uh, and so I think you're almost better off pushing it in transition, trying to get what you can versus letting Duke settle in on the defensive end where they just have better athletes. This kid's pretty good too. Ben Johnston, top four recruit coming out of high school from Lake Forest, Illinois. Johnston dodging against the shorty Palazzi. Feeds to Zawada, doorstep dunk. And Duke offense just clicking on all cylinders. Zawada, the recipient of that backdoor pass, the nice dip and dunk, getting the third for the Blue Devils. They lead here in Durham, 3-1. to Week in and week out, and that is what he has done for this program. Now one of the elite in all of college across. Chris Arciri, who got hurt in the season opener against Georgetown, winning the faceoff, creating offense, and Ben Smith cans it. There's that early offense we were talking about before we went to break. Arciri with University of Pencil's first win at the faceoff X and then gets it in transition. And the old school sladink from the outside. The three-quarter bounce to the top portion of the cage. Two goals for, Be for Penn. Both of them in transition. Ben Smith with his seventh goal of the season. Arsiri took the first faceoff of the season against Georgetown. Got hurt. And proceeded to miss the next two games. This is his first game back. Or Siri, Mac Eldridge, and the sophomore Ethan Costanzo all expected to see time at the faceoff X today. And you're not even telling the worst part of that story. Mac Eldridge, their next faceoff person <laughs> yeah. against Georgetown, the very next faceoff out for the game as well. Y you lose your two best faceoff men against a Georgetown. That's going to be a tough, uh, <laughs> a tough matchup to overcome. And it made a difference. Georgetown jumped out to a 5 0 lead by the time Penn settled down. Uh, Georgetown had a margin that was too much to overcome. Penn ended up losing 12-9. And Georgetown had played a couple of games for Penn. That was its season opener. Ivies usually start later than everybody else. 
O'Neal's got a short stick matchup. There's the slide. O'Neal puts it on Cage, and Carroll vetoes it. We all know Brennan O'Neal and his skill set and everything he can do. I would say the one area that I'd like to see him do a little bit better, he's not the best shooter on the run, right? Like, he can bomb it from the outside with his feet still, but hit when he's sweeping, he's not as deceptive a shooter as he is every other time he has the ball in his stick. For young players watching, Matt, what are some of the mechanics you look for when you look at a player trying to put a good shot on cage while on the run? First and foremost, it's it's getting your hips going towards the cage, right? If any momentum is going towards the sideline, you're going to be less accurate and you're going to lose power. The other piece then is getting your hips and your arms to move at the same time, which is very challenging when you're running full speed, right? And, and to me, that is like, I think it's the hardest skill in lacrosse is to become an elite shooter of the ball on the run to become a paul rabel to become a kyle dixon like you got to spend hours and hours just on the mechanics to pull that off offsides against duke quick restart for penn going quickly to nola into the empty net and we're tied at three all three penn goals have come in unsettled situations Nice job here on the ride, getting the ball back. The empty net. The easy part of that outcome. When it's wet outside, clearing becomes a whole other challenge. Those cross field passes, a little bit more challenging. Pockets get a little bit more deep, a little bit more whip. And right there, Penn doing what they need to do to stay competitive in this game. Winning the transition, winning the loose balls. Battling at the faceoff X. Face-off violation. It's against Duke. Arsiri and Naso, a couple of Long Island guys. Now, Penn has played Duke tough under Mike Murphy. In fact, in the Donowski era, the teams have split 10 meetings. Second midfield getting some run here for Penn. It's a little... Mix and match. Shot by Fury goes wide. They got Griffin Skane out there. He is the brother of Izzy Skane, who is the consensus best player in women's lacrosse, the reigning Tawartan winner from Northwestern. Tynan Walsh coming off a seven point game against Delaware, had five helpers. Nice dodge here by Skein. Comes back to X. Fury from the wing. And that'll be a shot clock reset. So a new 60 for Penn. And that's Penn's best offensive set of the contest. Making Duke think a little bit in terms of sliding. Right there, nice ball movement. Oh. Lee Burnett. Sorry, Hoffman there. Just a little sloppy on the pass. One of the top recruits in the country, but there you can see Penn starting to make Duke think about what, where and when they're going to slide, and that will create opportunities for them. When you zoom out, it's still early, but for both these conferences, the, the result of this game and the games this weekend when it's Ivy versus ACC on Tobacco Road, well, those go a long way in May. And the ACC's I mean, taken some hits early. You saw Notre Dame lose to Georgetown. The UNC's lost to Hopkins. Syracuse losses to Maryland and Army. Save on the shot by Sloat. Meanwhile, the Ivy still kind of looking for that marquee win as a conference. Cornell you know, had the loss to Denver. Harvard's got four wins. They haven't really played anybody. I mean, I think you bring up a great point, though. I mean, two years ago when... The Ivies got everyone in. It was because the success they had early in the year jumped everyone up in the rankings. And then when they all beat each other up, they were all quality wins and not losses. And, and that's why everyone got in. And so it, you don't like to think about things like that, but it absolutely has major impacts 
and who's going to make the NCAA tournament. There's just not enough spaces for how good the teams are now, and so it's these games that are out of conference that matter so much. Skane had his pass altered. Last touch, Duke, it was tipped. So now Robert Shane will trigger the senior from Potomac, Maryland. Marked by Jack Gray. Brower heads down the slide at 29 and white, a reigning first team All-American. Shane now picked up by Brower. He's not going to win that matchup, and he gets rid of it. Not many people do. <laughs> Shipley, spin cycle, shot to score, and Penn has its first lead of the game. The Weddington, North Carolina native, James Shipley. And, and we talked about that slide from Brower, right? He's not going to win that match, but guess what? Now Duke is sliding. They're trying to find their second men on the interior, and Shipley gets his hands free. And because Duke had expanded on their previous slides, there's no one now to engage him prior to him getting to position A in the field. Good, patient offense for Penn as they get their first lead, 4-3. to three. Yeah, You expect Duke to double pole because so much of Penn's offensive uh, initiation, if you will, comes from the midfield. And uh, Shipley, good bloodlines. His brother, Will, was a heck of a high school lacrosse player as well. Running back at Clemson, who is getting ready for the NFL draft. Naso had it, lost it. Here's McGuire. Shoots wide. The quality of Carroll's play in the cage for Penn has these Duke shooters thinking. Penn didn't let it get away from him and turned the tide there in the first quarter. Getting three straight to close it out. They're up one against the number one team in the country. UPenn up four to three. The middle of the field in those unsettled situations. Now when these two teams played a few years ago, if you looked at the stat sheet, Duke dominated, dominated, you would have thought Lopsided Duke win, but Penn was able to muck it up just enough, and uh, the Quakers came away with a win. That combined with Emmy Carroll has five saves in the first half, or excuse me, first quarter on track for 20. You can stay in some games with, with, with that type of play in the cage. Hot goalie, always part of the upset calculus. Well, two man games, Awada and O'Neill. Lavelle's done a nice job on 34 so far. The reigning Tawarton winner turns, fires, and a little offline with the question mark. And that's good defense from Lavelle. You'll give that shot up. Uh, again, O'Neill will probably make you pay once or twice because he's that good. But when he's fading away, like, that's all you can ask. McAdory flips it back to Sloat. Good look, Zawada Cash. Right now, the best offensive player on the field for the Blue Devils is McAdory. He is just creating all kinds of chaos, getting that first step. Penn is sliding. And then Duke is doing a nice job with the one more pass, and Zawada gets his second goal of the game. He's their assist guy, but today capitalizing on the opportunities that his teammates are creating for him. He is a Raleigh, North Carolina native. Played at the Hill Academy in high school. Has played a lot of box in his career. And when he was at Michigan, not only was he the school's all-time points leader, he left Michigan as the school's all-time leader in goals and assists as well. Now. Michael Bame, who's still there, will probably break some of those records before he's done. But he came to Durham with a lot of familiarity with this program, grew up going to a lot of Duke games. Here comes Skane. 
Fury pinballs off of McGuire. And the pass picked off. Jake Wilson, a nice job. Collapsing down on the crease. And picking that pass off. Duke's got to get it across midfield before that shot clock hits 60. And Jamison misfires on the pass. Couple extra possessions here created by University of Pennsylvania's ride. Now teams came into this game clearing below 80% against Penn. I mean, if you think about the teams that win national championships, that is a critical component. Notre Dame last year, the Kavanaugh's, the amount of extra possession they get. The year before that, well, Maryland was so much better than everybody, but they rode the ball well. And then the University of Virginia is known for their ride as well. Cam Rubin checked by Henry Bard. Now Wilson defending Robert Shane. Isaac Chorus shovels it back. It hits the ground. Bard pops it into the air. And it's Duke and it's McGuire. Now you can't go over everywhere. and back in the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. And uh, the, these shorties, Matt, not only are they terrific on defense and transition, they're threats to score. They've got 29 goals between the top four. Yeah, I mean, they're... It, uh, you can't say enough about them. They have experience. They have athleticism. I mean, most of them are all offensive middies coming out of high school. And now they're running as, as D middies, but so much more than that. Jack Papendick down the alley. O'Neal trying to get that left hand trouble. free. In trouble Gets now. to the middle. Carroll with the big save. That is Brennan O'Neal at his best. Sweeping from below goal line extended. Getting to the middle of the field, Carroll up to the task, but you see the athleticism of Brennan O'Neill. O'Neill now 0 for 5, still looking for his first points. Carroll has stopped 6 of 10 in the cage. Here's Ben Beecham, the freshman. Shipley's got the pole, Carpenter, who is among the all-time leaders at Duke and cause turnovers. Casey Mulligan inverts. Back to Smith, bouncer offline. I'd go back to that look. If I'm you or if I'm Pennsylvania. Take away by Duke. And another failed clear by the Blue Devils. Lavelle triggers the break. They have a two on one up top. Smith, the skip pass. Shipley thought about the step down. And Duke able to recover. I'd like to see Penn push it there. You know, they had an opportunity. They had a three on two in front of the cage with their middies trailing. I know Duke did a nice job getting back to the hole, but you need more of those opportunities because the six on six is going to be tough sledding. Danola got the step on Keith Boyer. Save made by Jamison. Race to the sideline, won by Danola. Nope. Penn ball. It'll be Duke ball instead. Danola with the shot there and a nice save from Jamison in the cage. 
Another failed clear by Duke. That's four. Boyer couldn't get it across. Here comes Tyler Keel. Let's see right if Penn the goes. Field there. Skip pass. Step down to Nola. And that one is through. Penn leads 5-4. Again, chaos breeding opportunity for Penn. I thought that was a mom goal there. I thought it was on the side of the cage. There was no reaction. Whether it was in the cage, but another goal coming in transition after a failed clear. A clear. And right there, puts it right off the hip of Jamison and Cage. Probably one Jamison wants back. But the Quakers came to play, getting another one goal lead up 5 4 in Durham. He's a freshman, he could get rattled. Duke's got a lot of depth in that position, so be interesting to see how they, they handle that if, if he doesn't turn it around. Arsiri has won four of six. He's given Penn a boost at the X. It's a Blue Devil team that has won 14 in a row at home, and Penn will try to get into its settled set here. They've got a 5-4 lead. And on the flip side, Matt, Penn has done a pretty good job of keeping Duke out of really any transition opportunity so far. And part of that, I, I think, has to do potentially with Duke bumping two poles up to the, the midfield, right? So they may not be pushing as much in transition. But I think Penn's probably made a pretty conscious effort there, too, just to not put themselves at risk by pressing down too much on the offensive end. Because you're not going to beat Duke if, if they're getting offensive settled possessions and they're scoring four or five goals in the transition game. It's just not going to happen. Boyer marking Shane. Looking for Chris Kinnett. That was tipped. Kinnett's another two-way midi. Penn's spacing seems really bunched, right? Like, they're not opening the space up by spreading out as an offensive unit, and it's allowing Duke to have one person play two, and you just can't do that as they force their seventh turnover. And if you're Duke, you need a clear, right? Give it to 23, and that's a straight punt return. So Wada has two goals and an assist. O'Neal looking for his first tally. And I'm Duke. I go back to McAdory. And here it is right here. This is just a dangerous player coming out of the box with a full head of speed. And now Penn's in trouble as they're sliding. Johnston gets to the middle. Do you see how it opens up the middle of the field for those Dodgers? Penn just cannot collapse enough once they have to extend out to McAdory. Little two-man game with O'Neal and McAdory. Lavelle stays with O'Neal. Johnston and Slope. Here's the redshirt freshman. Fires on the run. Carroll eats it up. Now the quick outlet. And Kinnett's a two-way midi. Mike Murphy telling us guys like Kinnett, Shipley, Skane, Shane. Those are guys that can go defense to offense. And this kid's pretty good too. Tynan Walsh. And, and guess what? When you have players that play two ways, you clear the ball well, you get goals in transition. It's a luxury that a lot of teams do not have anymore. Shipley's got a goal today. Carpenter meets him. Shipley retreats. Hoffman coming out of the box. Freshman's got the short stick gray. Over to Smith. Knocked away. Another cause turnover by Duke as Carpenter is the Roomba. Now the thing with Duke is to beat this team, you're going to have to beat them in more than one way. Right now the offense hasn't clicked. But they can still win faceoffs. They can still get after you on defense. It's a team that really doesn't have a single weakness. I had them as preseason number one after watching Brennan O'Neill and Dyson Williams in San Diego. I know they're down a goal right now, but this is very much the team to beat in my eyes, Matt. They certainly have 
everything you could ask for for an elite team. They have the experience, the, the amount of seniors and graduate students they have. The pieces fit so well together. The, the question I have on that, though, is Notre Dame didn't lose much. Right, that Notre Dame team that beat them in the finals brings back almost all that team. And they match up very, very well against this Duke Blue Devil team. So to me, there's a lot left to be determined in, in terms of who the best teams are. But, you know, I think Zawada is the difference maker for this Blue Devil team that they didn't have last year is that true ex-quarterback. Well, Notre Dame misses Brian Tevlin and Chris Fake, and that leadership is hard to replace. I'm with you. They're still a very talented team, but there, there are also some intangible elements there. The whole us versus the world revenge tour, you had that last year. Now you're the hunted. Meanwhile for Duke, you just saw some of their depth. Alex Slusher took that last shot. A Princeton transfer who's basically a third midfielder for Duke. He had 40 goals two years ago. Feet in front, shot fake, and a score. Ben Smith off the feed from Tynan Walsh, and Penn with its first two-goal advantage of the night. And a nice offensive possession there for the Quakers. All started in the trans, excuse me, the substitution game out of the midfield. And then Tynan Smith with the nice look away feed to Luke or excuse me, to Ben Smith, who finishes with composure inside. Gets his second of the game, eighth of the season. Ben get, or Penn getting creative and how to generate some offensive opportunities. Four points in the first half for Smith, two and two. And Penn... Comes up with another face-off off the ground. That time it's Anthony McMullen. Duke, though, taking it the other way. McGuire pushing, shoots low and scores. There's the rope unit for Duke. It's McGuire, the seventh goal of his career. Arseri for Penn wins the face-off, but Carpenter Causes another turnover, and then McGuire in transition. Running straight to the throat of the goal. Takes the punishment. And puts one past Emmett Carroll and Cage for the Quakers. I love McGuire's game. He is just an absolute freak athlete. Very, very skilled as well. Good teams on the defensive end in the takeaway department, Matt. They're usually double digits and cause turnovers per game. You're in that 11-12 range. That's pretty good. Duke has nine caused turnovers in the first half. They average about 12 a game. And look, if they add that to the arsenal that they have, I mean, because I would say, like, Brower, right? He's not a takeaway guy. He's just, you just can't get by him. So, like, if they're causing that many turnovers and you can't run by them and they play sound defense, that, that, that's a tough combination. That is a tough combination. Felt by Bellarmine, High Point, St. Joe's, and Jacksonville this year. Shot from the wing, Jamison. Gobbles it up, his third save. A nice save there for Jamison. Stood tall. Caught the ball clean, and when you catch the ball as a goalie, guess what? It makes the clearing game a little bit easier. Takes a lot of that pressure off the defensive midfielders to get it to the other side of the field. Gray staying out there on offense, 20 and white. Zawada operating from up top. This is Balsamo, comes to Penn, and now the Quakers looking to push, but Duke gets back, and Ben Smith will wait for reinforcements. Timeout Mike Murphy, 1.33 to go, opening half, Penn on the road 
against the number one team in the country, nursing a one goal lead. Anish Raf, Matt Ward with you on this Friday night. Following our game, we've got Princeton and UNC, part of a ACC Ivy two step this weekend. Duke gets Princeton on Sunday. Penn will go to UNC. And uh, for Penn, their big challenge this year how do you replace a guy like Sam Handley, first round pick in the PLL draft, guy who's a former Tawarton Award finalist? But in some ways, Matt, you know, at times, because Sam Handley was so good and so big and so strong, you know, Penn did a lot of ball watching, and it was give the ball to 26, watch him draw a slide, and he's going to feed off that slide or he's going to score off his own if nobody slides. This year, they've been forced to play really more within an offensive system, and it's a lot of equal opportunity, guys having to share the rock, and they rely more on ball movement than, than Hercules. It was interesting to hear Coach Murphy saying this team's much more about the hockey assist, right? We're trying to get a goal off of two passes. Last year with Hanley, he could do it all. He could score himself, but if he was creating the offense, it was one pass and a goal. And that led to some bad tendencies, Coach Murphy thought, for the players off ball. And it kind of bogged down their offense to some degree. He said this year we're a little bit smaller, a little bit quicker. We're more likely to make two, three extra passes than we have for the last couple of years. And, and that's no, I mean, Hanley is the best player to come out of the University of Pennsylvania and for some time, right? They'd love to have him on the team, but it has forced this team to grow up and, and it's created some opportunities for them to approach defenses differently. And you also lose a really good finisher in Dylan Gergar. You just saw Leo Hoffman, who's got the ball now. He steps into Hanley's footprints his dinosaur tracks really on that first midfield. Fury, who's built like Handley, 6'5", 220, makes it 7'5". Gabe Fury a couple of years ago came on strong midseason, battled through a hamstring most of last year, and he stands tall on that field. Yeah, it stands tall at 6'5", I'd say. So a little different than the shot he took early in the game. Same kind of movement, sweeping to the center of the field with his left hand. But this time he pulls it down to the ground and to the near side post. He had Jamison leading away from the cage, excuse me, towards the far post, rips it back to the near side. Perfect placement for Gabe Fury. Gets his third of the season. They're going to give him a penalty for taunting. And it's interesting. We spoke to Mike Murphy about this. You would probably not think it because they're Ivy Leaguers. But Matt, having covered the Ivy League tournament the last few years, the amount of chirping that goes on when the Ivies play is at another level. And really, the, the initial culprits, if you want to call them that, is Yale. And teams have sort of... They'll found that it gives them some extra juice. If they're going to keep chirping at you, we got to chirp back, and sometimes it carries into these non-conference games as well. And, and Coach Murphy said he doesn't love it, but he's like, we need it. <laughs> uh, need because it. if other teams are doing it and you're not responding, you may be on your heels. To, to me there, you know, maybe we can take another look at it, but I'm not sure I love that call there. He was fired up, getting to the middle of the cage. You want your players to play with emotion. It makes you wonder if it was just the emotion of the moment, which maybe you get a free pass on, or has there been a buildup? Because, again, the Ivies have that reputation, and they've had it for a number of years. And you talk to coaches from other conferences, they say it, they talk a lot of trash, and sometimes it crosses a line or it crosses a few lines. So whether there was a buildup to that moment or not, but they get fury right there. And you can see the hand gesture. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> you know, I think that's just a player who made a big-time play and has his team up against the number one team in the country. That's a big penalty because there's no face-off. Duke gets the ball oftentimes non-releasable. I'm not sure on this one if it's a releasable penalty or not, but... You hate to see momentum taken away from, from extracurricular activity like that. It's been a clean game otherwise. This is the first penalty of the game. And if you're Duke, 
you're probably wondering, is this a chance to get Brennan O'Neill going? So far today, double bagels. O'Neill for his career, 23 man-up goals. And yeah, this Duke team, 6 for 11 on the season. Just clicking at a very high, high rate. Look for them to spin the ball a few times and get it to Zawada, who's their feeder, and ultimately to shift O'Neal into a position to get his hands free. Dyson Williams inside a phalanx of Quakers. Now O'Neal. Now Penn really tightening in. Now Duke spreads it out. Zawada, Denenza. And a save by Carroll. It seemed like Denenza forced that one. And now can Penn clear. And Duke down stayed a in a three. They stayed in a 3-3 set as Penn pushes in transition. They might have a chance here. Short-handed Smith. Good look. And he missed it. But Penn's defense does a nice job there. Playing patient on their slides. Duke didn't transition. I don't think they moved sets enough. They started in a 3-3. They stayed in a 3-3. And this is the net result of Penn pushing in transition. Ben Smith just missing the near corner. Yeah, he knew it. A missed opportunity. That would have been huge to get a goal on the man down. Those are typically worth a few from a momentum perspective. Smith, the junior from the Maryland area, played at high school powerhouse Boys Latin. One of three 20-goal scorers on the team last year, along with Handley and Cam Rubin. Penn's got a two-goal lead on number one Duke. We saw on Sunday, then number one Notre Dame going down, losing to Georgetown. If Penn were to hold on, this is a result that reverberates not just for these two teams, but for these two leagues. I, look, I think right now, if you think ACC, right, you you just assume Duke, UVA, and Notre Dame, and, and Syracuse, right? Like, I think those, you're not getting four teams in if you, if you lose this game today. You're just not, right? Like, I think getting three in may be a challenge because you're out of conference schedule. It's not going to look like it did last year. Right? I think you're looking, you know, go two years back when the ACC got one team in. A big part of that was the early season struggles that they had. Right? So it, it, this, these are massive games based on hey, how look they're going to Big impact. Ten. Look at the Big Ten. Maryland, you know, has got a couple of pretty good wins. They beat Richmond, they beat Syracuse. Johns Hopkins has a win against North Carolina. Blue Jays will play Syracuse next weekend in Charlotte. That's a big game. Georgetown for the Big East has the win against Notre Dame. Final few seconds. Shipley missing wide, and the first half comes to an end. Big time saves. Standing is ground. Making life difficult for these Blue Devil shooters. Josh Zawada has been Duke's offensive star. Brennan O'Neill, reigning Tawartan Award winner, MVP of the World Games last summer, without a goal, without a point on five shots. And Penn holding its own at the faceoff X, but we get a quick flag off the opening draw. It's going to be a tripping foul. And right there, a clear trip on Carpenter. How about Arceri facing off for Penn? He's been a difference maker for them, holding his own. He's seven of nine, and Penn will go man up for the first time today. Three for four on the season. Fury 
Skips it. Hard shot goes wide. That's Connell Kumar, the Virginia transfer. Walsh had five assists in the win against Delaware last time out. Penn wins against Delaware and UAlbany. They lost to Georgetown. Fury, crease feed. Danola can't drop it in. Here's Kenny Brower, the first team All-American. He lost it on the ground. Picked up by Penn. They still have time on the extra man. Every 50-50 ground ball coming up Penn's way. Fury with a howitzer too high. And this is a big save. That was a big save from Jamison there, who looks to be settling down. I like his body positioning and his movement in the cage, but right there. He didn't have a the chance. Back end. Tynan Walsh off the feet from Fury Penn with its largest lead. And on the back end of the penalty there, just a nice job by Walsh. Stepping up, GLE, and then just look at that deception with the shot. Drops his stick low, Jamison goes with him, and then the quick flick of the wrist to the top of the cage. Duke down by three, their largest deficit on the short season. That's going to be a face-off violation on our series. Well, Matt, we talked about it early. The difference between these teams, Duke obviously huge advantage talent-wise as O'Neal gets downhill, bounces it wide. The backup to Penn, hustled by Peter Blake. Big difference coming in. Penn's been pretty battle-tested. You play Georgetown, you play Delaware. Duke has had more of an easy lead up to the season. And this is Duke's first big test. Rainy night in Durham. Not a lot of fans at the stadium. You got to bring your own juice a little bit. Yeah, that the Penn team has played, I would say, bigger, faster, more athletic teams. You know, outside of St. Joseph's, Duke had a clear advantage in all of those games, size-wise. And it's showing. I mean, Penn has come to play. And they're pushing the number one team in the country to the brink. Here's McAdoo. He had the shorty, got the slide, and finds Sloat. You hit it early in the game. McAdoo could be a difference maker tonight. Yeah, and Duke's doing a nice job. When they have had settled possessions, subbing McAdoo out of the box last. And they're getting him going at a full head of steam. And right there, again, he's just... He can take that shot, but he knows he's got number 15, Max Sloat, the redshirt sophomore, wide open as his D-man collapsed down, and he pings the far post. That's the recipe for the Blue Devils on the offensive end. Sloat had his season cut short last year, broke his wrist in the Syracuse game. Naso. Able to gain control and plays it back. Max Loda, redshirt freshman from San Mateo, California. And there he played for a former teammate of yours and a former Tawartan winner and Chris Rotelli, the Virginia star. Here comes Walsh waiting for the Cavalry. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> What's going on with Duke's clearing game is, is baffling. Just lazy... Not smart plays. Make the simple pass. Duke 9 of 14, clearing pen perfect in the clearing game. Here comes Skane. Marked by McGuire. Now Robert Shane will take Jack Papendick to X. Out of the invert, the save by Jameson. This has been a challenge for Duke. Bard slips, and it's picked up by Rubin. Penn with a chance unsettled. Shane, he wasn't looking at the goal, plays it back to Denola, and it's 9-6 Pennsylvania. 
another goal off a failed Duke clear. That is six in the game, and right here, a nice job pushing in transition, being patient. Shane gets to the middle of the field, and then the knuckle puck from Luke Danola. Tough for Jamison to read. That really slowed down off the turf. Very hard to win games when you can't get possession in the clears and you're not winning faceoffs. Duke is not used to this. No, for the first four games, especially early on in the first three quarters when Duke pulverized teams, Matt, there were times it felt like the other team never had the ball. Hasn't and been it's, that starting way to feel, it's starting to feel the opposite of that in this game, right? Like Duke isn't having long possessions that, that pen is, right? I mean, the, the time of possession tilted heavily in favor of Penn. Penn getting some of its second midfielders on. Mulligan over to Danola. Here comes Kinnett. Ben Smith fires on the run. Jamison knocked it down. It's loose near the crease and Jamison clamps down. And Matt, there's ACC teams watching this, and they're watching they're in trouble here in the clearing game. They barely get it across. You get into league play. North Carolina rides, Virginia rides, and Notre Dame rides. You got to be a good clearing team in this league. And look, I think the weather has something to do with it. It, it, it sure. does make that aspect of the game hard. And Penn is a very good clearing team, or excuse me, riding team. I don't know if they're on the level of a Notre Dame or Virginia in terms of you know, how well they execute that part of the game plan. Penn's got four cause turnovers today. They only average about four per game through the early part of the season. Johnston's got a short stick. Fires on the run. It's not the shot that you want there. And Zawada will dig it out. How do you get Brennan O'Neill going here, Matt? Got to get him the ball first and foremost, right? It's They're not shutting him off. They're not extending, right? Like, it's going to be off McAdory kind of creating those slides, but... This is an opportunity that, like right now, he can run off the end line and pick up that ball, right? Like he can get goal line extended. He hasn't touched the ball in this half on any offensive Brendan possession. Brendan Lavelle has done a fantastic job on him. Zawada not there. It's dug out by Lavelle. I, you know, we highlighted the matchup in this game in the open. Duke's attack, Penn's defense. Advantage Penn so far. Great ball movement. Walsh, the doorstep dunk. And Penn's margin grows to four. There's an upset brewing at Koskinen. From defense to offense, the transition game has been all Quakers here in Durham. And just tic-tac-toe passing. Tynan Walsh, the recipient of the great ball movement. Puts in the back of the cage. Very impressed with this University of Pennsylvania team. Coach Murphy said he loved them. And he's like, look, this is a team that's going to get better each week. We have so many new pieces. It's going to happen. He loves how the, the makeup and the talent that he has. And they're proving it tonight. And they're winning faceoffs, especially when our series out there. He's eight out of twelve. Eldridge, two for six. Here's Shipley against Wilson. Fury shot denied by Jameson. And talking about the faceoffs, the one piece Naso is is the horse for Duke, right? Like, he, they're going to use him the entire game. Sometimes it's nice to, to have that second person, especially if you're not having a lot of success. Boy, clearing and getting the ball across midfield in time has been a challenge tonight for Duke. 
And, and Brendan O'Neill is one of my favorite players that I've ever watched in college across. My one knock on him can be that there's times where he, he removes himself from the game to some degree. He does, and again, I think part of that's trying to get his teammates involved and make sure the flow is there. But now is the moment. You need your best player to make the play to get you back involved offensively. Can he do it here against Lavelle? Gives it up to Zawada. Zawada has his man hung up. Cat and mouse with Blake. Feeding O'Neal, who finally gets his first tally of the game. And with that goal, he passes his assistant coach, Matt Donowski, and moves into fifth all-time on Duke's career goal-scoring list. Justin Guttering, one of the most underrated college lacrosse players ever. <laughs> like, he's Duke's all-time leading scorer. Uh, he, he was phenomenal, you know, and, and he's, it's just fun to see him up there because I loved his game, and I don't think he ever got the credit he deserved. I'm with you. Helped Duke to the national championship game against Yale as a senior. Just relentless. Loose ball. Nobody knows where it is. Now it's a sea of maroon, and somehow Gray comes up with it, slipping and sliding on the turf. Uh, the Penn Longsticks have just created anarchy all night. And who else? That's Lavelle. Dumps it up ahead for Walsh. The wet turf slows it down, and Penn goes back to work on offense. Duke's not getting any extra possessions. They're seeding ground at the face-off X. They've had a lot of costly failed clears, six of them. Well, Penn's been pretty clean. And, and look, I mean, Penn is showing dominance athletically in the middle of the field. Right? That, that's a 50-50 ground ball. The entire team for both sides scrapping for it, and they're all coming up Penn's way. Right? We thought coming in this game, Duke had an advantage athletically. It's not proving to be the case in the middle of the field. Jamison denies Skane. Here comes O'Connor. Able to get across. Can Duke get early offense? Good look here. Zawada missed it. And Penn's got the backup. That was maybe the best transition opportunity Duke's had all night. They're going to get a penalty Allen here on Zawada. Down. I think they're going to call. It's gonna be some sort of unsportsmanlike would be my guess. That's going to be Dyson Williams. And, and Duke, for some reason, was, I believe, making a claim they were close. They, they thought they deserved possession on that. When clearly, in my opinion, U Penn was closer, or excuse me, Pennsylvania was closer to the end line. Fury crease feed. It was tipped. It'll stay with Penn. Last touch, Duke. Walsh triggers against Wilson. From the outside, off the pipe and in. That's Kumar, the Virginia transfer. And Penn again extends to a four goal lead. This is going to be an unreleasable penalty, I believe. So Penn's going to have a chance to make it, take it. But Kumar has one of the best shots on this roster from the outside. Let's look at this angle. I mean, picture perfect placement. Rings it off the post. Hip height. A big moment in this game. Can Naso. Prevent a two goal run here. Now, the scouting report on Kumar coming out of high school, stretch shooter. And you're right, non releasable penalty. So, Penn remains on the extra man. They faced off with the man advantage. Still 20 seconds here left. Ruben over to Fury. Back to X and Walsh. Penn moves it around the perimeter.
Rubin, face dodge, shot, no. Walsh has the backup. Duke will have its full component on defense. Shipley coming out of the box for Penn. Good matchup with he and Tyler Carpenter. Ruben wanted no part of Brower. Fury trying to feed inside. Duke knocks it down. McGuire can go. He's got a goal tonight already. Dyson Williams has been quiet tonight. Just one goal, and his production, Matt, is a product of strong offensive prowess, which Duke just hasn't had tonight. McAdory out of the box. Sloat setting the pick. He's got the short stick. McAdory runs right by him. Skip pass over the head of Johnston. Rain keeps it in bounds. Might get a push. Nope. Pen ball. And I get McAdory has the advantage. You've got to get Brennan O'Neill in the game. He, he's not touching the ball. Really, in, at any point in a place to be dangerous in, in two and a half quarters? He's the best player in the country. Maybe on the planet. Right? I mean, look, he was the MVP of the World Games. I would say that's a pretty good indication. Gray, aggressive defense on the freshman Beecham. Feet in front, Jamison with a big save. They love his temperament and goal. Calm, collected, unflappable. And not a lot of wasted movement in his, his body positioning and, and reactions, which you love. It, it's, he's a very patient keeper. Now the only thing we have not seen him do much tonight in this season we haven't seen him really make that long outlet passes, which some of the top goalies in the country do. Zawada marked by Blake. Now, Brennan O'Neill. Pinballs off a couple of defenders. Lavelle's been a menace on defense. Forces O'Neill to give it up. Williams shot from the outside. That's an easy save for Carroll, his 11th stop. And Penn able to clear, still perfect in the clearing game. I mean, Lavelle, just an absolute stud. <laughs> Running through picks, bodying up Brennan O'Neill. He's battle tested. We talked to, about it pregame. Sam Handley for, right. for UPenn last year <laughs> kind of built the same, and this isn't new to him. He's seen it before, and he has been up to task today. Preseason All American, but again, I think end of year, you look and you see what he's done against Brennan O'Neill. Now you're talking first team All American type numbers for him. Before the Ivy League tournament last year, Mike Murphy described Lavelle as an animal with a mean streak. Here's Hoffman. He's got the short stick, McGuire. They got Balsamo caught on defense. Dinola's pass knocked down. Over and back. Duke's got it here with 9.2. Can they go quickly? Off the restart. Carpenter all the way. Bouncer, Carroll denies it. And on the road in Durham, 
17th ranked Penn out of the Ivy League has the number one team in the country on the ropes. Emmett Carroll, the outstanding keeper for the University of Pennsylvania, standing on his head. What a night right here. He's going to shut the door on the Blue Devils to keep their four-goal lead. Anish Roth, Matt Ward with you. Fourth quarter in Durham. Number one, Duke. Down by four. The dynamic duo of Brennan O'Neill and Dyson Williams has been shut down by this pen close defense, which has played together for a long time. Emmett Carroll has been marvelous in goal. Duke has been sloppy in the clearing game. The pen long poles have created problems. The Quakers have held their own and then some at the faceoff X. Mike Murphy's teams historically have played Duke tough. He's 5-5 five and five against the Blue Devils in the John Donowski era. And a chance to get a win against the number one team in the country. But there's 15 minutes to play. And Duke still has the best player in college lacrosse at Brennan O'Neill. Naso and Arsiri, a couple of Long Island boys. And Naso wins it. If you're Duke and you're looking for a spark, 56 could be that guy. McAdory, so quick. Sloat running out of the box, fires with a right hand. Carroll makes the body save. How much easier is it for Penn to clear the ball in this game, right? Like, that that's pretty simple. It's one pass and out. Credit the Quakers. They've been dropping back towards that midline and, and really slowing it down, which congests things, and it makes it a lot harder to, to do. And, again, I think a big part of it is that double pull strategy that Duke's implementing on the defensive end makes the clearing game much harder. The four-goal lead by Penn, matching its largest of the game. Shipley, a few years ago against Duke, had a big game-tying goal late in regulation, a game that Penn won in overtime. Walsh marked by Brower. Kenny Brower has started every game of his Duke career. Hoffman picked up by Bard, 10 to shoot. Shipley down the alley, jumper, and a backup to Gabe Fury. Five to shoot. Fury to Walsh. And Penn's going to have to dump this in the corner. Yeah, advantage Penn. <laughs> you, got your, you got your best offensive weapon here as a settled ride. Balsamo, can he get through a double team? Yes. Still not easy, right? I mean, Penn is, he had to beat a double team there in the midfield. O'Neal against Lavelle. O'Neal's only goal in this game came off ball. He was cutting on a Zawada feed. Zawada has Till hung up. Papendick plays it back to the Michigan transfer. Nothing there for Zawada. Denenza drives down the alley. Penn clogging up the middle. That crease pass wasn't there for Dyson Williams. To 
Cadenza, inside roll, bounce shot. Is he in the crease? It is a goal. And Aiden Denenzo with the tally to bring Duke within three. The long, patient offensive possession for the Blue Devils. Opens up that middle of the field. See how there's no one here in the crease to slide. And Denenzo with a nice inside roll. Crease awareness. Right here, look at that hard plant. Now look at the bend up the field. And then a nice three-quarter release to the far portion of the cage. That's a big goal out of your second midfield. But also, Matt, Duke had to work for that goal. Offense in settled sets has not come easy. We're going to get a procedure call against Duke. It'll be pen ball. I mean, that long offensive possession came after... You know, a, a tough ground ball for Balsamo there. You know, Duke hasn't been able to get an advantage really on any one-on-one -on -one matchup, especially from their attackmen. Maybe coming out of the midfield a little bit with McAdory, but other than that, Penn's defense up to task. Yeah, and that's been surprising because we knew Penn had a really strong, close defense. But you said Duke's attack before the game. Maybe the best positional unit in the country look you have the world game mvp <laughs> you have a starting player on the canadian national team and then michigan's all-time leading scorer that's a, pretty a good final team from like, like yeah that's pretty like on paper that's pretty darn good and, and on product it's been really good just and not tonight. product and paper yeah rubin with the right hand whistles it high 25, 25. and you know, duke's defense has played a really strong game you think of all the goals penn has had when it's been unsettled in transition off of failed clears in settled sets and this is what duke has done to penn they're gonna get a flag on boyer and uh, you gotta listen here this is gonna be it should it should be multiple minutes unreleasable based on the rules now that's that should have been a hold i don't think they called that and then right there now one they're gonna look at is it above the shoulders if, if that look, I don't know if that was above shoulders. I think he got under his shoulders. So they'll just say unnecessary one minute, but they did get the holding call on Brower here, so Penn will have a two-man advantage, and that does seem clean when you watch it on replay it, hit by Boyer. I, th I think that the violence of the hit came from the hold, actually. Right, right there. So the chest, the, the hit looked okay to me, right? Um, but when you they saw that it reaction. Unnecessary, and I'm wondering, we can't maybe hear the whistle. Was it unnecessary because the whistle had blown, and that's why you basically called a late hit? And, and I think no matter what in that scenario, how, how exaggerated the hit looked, they're going to throw the flag there, right? The, and I think the hold actually created that. Six on four for Penn. Crease feed, Ben Smith at it again. His third goal of the game, he's got a five-point evening. Penn on the two-man up. Simple near side cut, Tynan Walsh. See that subtle head fake looking to the back post. Ben Smith cuts near side. When you have a two-man advantage, it's pretty simple to generate quality shots, particularly with crisp ball movement and well-timed cuts. So the lead back up to four. We're back at even strength. McAdory out there on the face-off wings. Naso able to come up with it. And here is McAdory. Gets a step. Hits Turbo. McAdory all the way. Carroll got a piece. Boy, Emmett Carroll has been a difference maker. 14 out of 22 in cage. Let's talk about McAdory's wheels there. <laughs> Lavelle helicopters it away from O'Neill. He's able to get it back. They're going to call him for playing without a stick. It's a procedure call. 
He was able to pick up the stick, but he played without the stick momentarily. It goes back to Penn. Matt Brendan Lavelle probably going to put this game on his All-American tape at the end of the season. He's putting on his Team USA resume at this point <laughs> based on <laughs> the well, quality of play today. on the other sideline. Yeah. The head coach for Team USA. And that save Carroll had on that McAdory shot was big time, too. I mean, that was offside. McAdory running 5,000 miles per hour. A Duke team that came in averaging almost 21 goals per game. You expect Penn to use as much clock as they can in these settled sets. Three goals for Smith. Dinola. Beecham seen a lot of action tonight. Big ground ball. Walsh keeps it in play. Five to shoot. And that'll belong to Duke. And then a mistake for Penn there, right? Because now the clear's happened, right? Duke's out. If he had thrown that towards the end line, you would have killed more clock, give yourself a better chance to cause a turnover. It's the little things. Right now, Penn's done a very good job all game of that. But right there, one that's a coaching moment. You watch film at the end of the game, and Coach Murphy is going to walk them through that. Now here's McAdory again out of the box. Rolling down the alley, puts it past Carroll. McAdory, the speedster for the Blue Devils, gets his hands free, fires to the four post. Big time play from the junior. It's Naso. Eldridge was terrific in the win against Delaware, 15 out of 19. No one's more won more faceoffs at Duke than Naso, who passed the great Brendan Fowler earlier this year. A lot of holding there. McLaughlin lost it. Carpenter pushing. He lost it. And Blake comes up with it. Now another transition chance for Penn. McMullen over to Smith. Smith gets it back. Bounces it offline. Walsh has the backup. And right there, you can see how important stick work is in the game of, of lacrosse, right? That was a great transition opportunity for Penn. That one subtle pass that wasn't stick side high that went low creates enough time for Duke to get back in the hole and take away any easy opportunity to score. Penn fortunate that shot actually wasn't saved, and now they can be a very patient offense and milk some clock. Less than seven minutes to go. Fury, a goal and an assist. Matched up with McGuire, one of the best shorties in America. Shipley playing in his home state. Good look from the wing. Jamison saves it with the chest. On the rebound. And a big race here. Won by Henry Bard, the sophomore from Kobe Bryant's high school, Lower Merriam, outside of Philadelphia. The freshman Jamison with a big save there. Fury had his hands free, the strong left hand. Held his ground. Brennan O'Neill, one for seven shooting. Zawada, two goals, two assists. And McAdory with two tallies and a helper. They have led the charge offensively for Duke. Here is McAdory, former national player of the year out of high school. Number one player in his class when he came out. O'Neal hits the turf. Lavelle jars it loose. Bodies flying, and Lavelle comes up with it. Boy, has he owned his matchup against Brennan O'Neal tonight. 
O'Neal seemingly having a tough time balance-wise on this field. The weather seems It is deep. wet. It is wet, and, and again, certain people, like I was always, I loved it when it rained. I, my game just suited that. For O'Neal, it seems like he's slipping and sliding a little bit, uh, more so than, than he normally is. I guess that's the difference being 5'10", 205, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you sink a little bit more in the ground. Low center of gravity, Matt. That's right. Good night. Griffin Skein. Oh, Pat, I've already got three goal lead. I've already got six text messages saying 205 question mark. Twelve to shoot. Mulligan over to Danola. Junior out of New Jersey. Finds Skein, beating Shane. Hits the pipe. Rubin cleans up just as the shot clock was about to expire. And that's one of the moments where your coaching staff is almost saying, no, 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 let's, let's milk some clock. Get an extra possession. The shot clock resets. Right here off the post. So and the shot clock was supposed to reset. Right. It, 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 that's a good goal for Penn. Another loose ball scenario resulting in a goal for the Quakers. That's been the story of the game. And Penn less than four and a half minutes away. from knocking off number one. How about this stalemate? Eldridge and Naso. It's Wilson. Clearing has been an issue for Duke. Rizzoli brings it up ahead. Urgency has to set in for Duke. Penn has had Three or four goal lead for most of this second half. McAdory out of the box. Wheels down the alley, missed the cage. Zawada digs it out. They reset the shot clock, and so they're going to fix the shot clock error here. Shot clock was not supposed to reset. Mike Murphy, former Duke captain on the 91 team. Year in, year out, Matt. You'll be hard-pressed to find a more battle-tested team than Penn. Zawada to Denenza against McMullen. Gets free inside, has to turn back. Carroll makes the save. Denenza against the shorty. Bouncer with a left hand, his second goal of the game. His seventh of the season. He scored in every game this year. And Duke within three, 310 to go in regulation. Back-to-back -back goals for Denenza for the Blue Devils on offense. The nice split right to left. The senior from Long Island plants his feet, weight towards the cage, changes planes. Pretty offense. Great execution getting to the right place in the middle of the field. Gonna go to Duke. Our colleague Quint Kesnick, I think, said it at some point. 
that this has the makings to be one of the best weeks of early season lacrosse we've had in a long time. And we saw Georgetown upset Notre Dame. We saw Loyola Towson come down to an overtime buzzer beater by a long pole. Army beating Syracuse in OT. Denenza with a hat trick, his first career hat trick. And Duke's not going away here with Penn making upset. Denenza proving to be lightning in a bottle. The nice patient dodge. Look at this placement off the far post. Nothing Emmett Carroll can do about that. Two forty to go. Massive faceoff. Arsirian Naso, and we're going to get a hold, and it's on Penn. Mike Murphy doesn't like the call. Two thirty to go. Here's McAdory. Dyson Williams has the backup. Aiden Denenza, fourth quarter hat trick and two goals here in an eye blink for Duke. I like that move from McAdory. Driving hard left, spinning back to his strong right hand, just missing the cage. If you had Aiden Denenza. Denenza being the spark plug for the Blue Devils offense prior to the game, good for you. He has been huge for them here in the second half. Do you think it's raining in Chapel Hill? I would imagine it is. <laughs> ben Johnston, the freshman, spins it back to Nenzo. Wanted another one. The start of Princeton, North Carolina, by the way, will be over on the ESPN app. We'll bring you to Chapel Hill in progress once we're done here. O'Neal with the right hand, helmet saved by Carroll. It will stay with Duke with a fresh shot clock. When you're defending Brennan O'Neal, force him to his right. He's still going to get a shot off there, but he's not as effective a shooter. He's gotten much better as a shooter over his four years in Durham. O'Neal, that's the direction you want to force him. Dyson Williams inside, big save, Carroll. McAdory gets it back. Denenzo with his fourth goal of the fourth quarter. And he is willing Duke back there within one. Have yourself a day. Aiden Denenza, and this is just a great offensive flurry for the Blue Devils. The nice save there from Carroll. McAdory with the smart play to get it to X to Zawada, who can now survey the entire field. And Aiden Denenza steps to space and delivers his third straight goal for the Blue Devils. Talk about a big faceoff here. Jake Naso, Denenza's high school teammate at St. Anthony's. And they're going with Eldridge. Eldridge wins it clean. And Penn can essentially run out the clock if they play keep away. Mike Murphy will call a timeout. And Duke will bring in William Helm. The Kaiser will come in, and this is, it's not a goalie pull. This is because they feel they're better with Helm as the extra defender. Shipley, the fastest player on this Penn team, and being and chased by Brower. Surprised Duke now the double. not engage. I think you double team right away. Keep running Shipley. here, Shipley. Gets out of the now ambush. He got He's got the empty net if he wants it. Puts it on goal and scores. It's 14 to 12. You okay with that shot on goal? You got Naso and all Americans still facing off, and there's time left. I'm always of the mindset, if you have that empty net, you take it. Um, yes, you could kill the whole period of time, but Shipley's running out of gas here. 
Right, and so I, I do think you take it, but again, I'm shocked that Duke didn't start with the double team. If you're gonna take the keeper out of the cage to start the play, why not start with the double and use the sideline as that third defender? The way that they designed it, that, that wasn't gonna be a, pop, a possibility for them. Huge face off, it's a ground ball battle. Denenza comes up with it. He's got four tallies in quarter number four. Up ahead to Naso. McAdory from long range. O'Neal's got the backup. 35 seconds to go. And a timeout. Duke. And they're starting with Zawada. Look for an on ball pick here to try to get his hands free for some sort of pick action in the inside. Johnston gets it back from Zawada. Tiptoes the crease, feeding for Dyson Williams. And they keep it in bounds. I'll say shot. So Duke ball. Less than 20 seconds. That was Denenza. O'Neal will dig it out. Duke's got to go quickly. O'Neal trying to get to the left hand. He does. Lavelle with the stick check. Zawada on the ground, Duke in the crease, and Penn has knocked off number one Duke. The Penn Quakers on a rainy night in Durham score the big win for the Ivy.